All right, everyone, welcome back from the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. If you've not done so already, give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, nice little gap and go day here for the markets. Uh, spiders are up over two and a half percent, two and three quarters now. Uh, triple Q's up just about the same, being dragged down a bit by Tesla. Um, Elon Musk re-entered his bid to take over and uh, that took a hit intraday now that didn't really bring the market down believe it or not that was um, around 11 30 that news came out and this little dip in the market happened about an hour later so that wasn't really dragging the market down um, but tesla is a little bit of a weaker name here today it's still green um, but not up as much as you would think for a day like today and then twitter obviously it just got re um, or unhalted here it looks like just now look at that move there on twitter up 22 percent um, so obviously that's kind of one of the big stories of the day, but into the markets here, um, you know, again, a gap and go day. And we'll show you on the intraday here. This was kind of your resistance level, this yellow line, and we were able to gap right above that. And we went right into gap fill here and it just chugged right through it. Like it didn't even pull back or anything. Um, you also had uh, the hourly uh, 100 MA that it was able to just burst right through there eventually did back test that level uh, intraday but now market hanging in there okay and you do have an hourly inside bar so again kind of very much the same as yesterday we're still looking at these pivots here around 382 and that daily 20 moving average that's kind of the level i'm looking at right now you know on the smaller time frame there's also the four hour 50 moving average so a lot of resistance up in that zone i have to think that's kind of where the market wants to go in the, in the um you know, in the near term, doesn't mean it happens tomorrow. Doesn't mean we go in a straight line. You know, we've had a nice move off the lows. I mean, take a look at the candles here on the futures. I mean, look at that's a those are big moves there uh, in a short period of time. So it wouldn't rule out a pause or something like that. Um, you definitely, you know, definitely can't rule that out. You know, if you had a big move here, um, but that's really what we're looking for here in the short term. Now there is a fake print here on the spiders down to three sixty six fifty seven. That is a fake print. That's basically back down to uh, gap fill from yesterday and if you look at the spx you can see that's not there so that is a fake print that didn't happen um, but we'll definitely make note of that as we do have that on the daily chart of the spy um, but overall really what's happening right now is the market starting to kind of sniff out a, a a fed pivot we had the jobs uh, job openings came on uh, came out this morning and it was a pretty good um it was pretty weak number so the market was expecting a lot, uh, a lot less, and there was a lot more, um, and that really gave the market a lift here. So that's kind of what's going on right now. Now, short term, that is a good thing for the market, obviously, as you can see. And the market was even kind of sniffing this out yesterday. But the big picture is this isn't a really a good thing in the big picture either, and that's because the Fed pivoting with eight percent inflation isn't a good thing. <laughs> so. Um, that's something the market's going to come to realize here. But right now, the knee-jerk reaction is a move up. And how do I know that? Well, just look at the two-year. Um, so the two years, the two years should be roaring and soaring right now. But it's actually had a successful back test of that twenty moving average. Um, pretty weak, all things considered. And you know, going back to bonds, I told you guys yesterday, I do have a buy signal on the ten-year. That's still the case right now. Um, so the ten-year holding up well um, holding that 20 moving average for now same thing with the the 30 year there but really the story is the two year it's not telling us it's safe yet um and that's really the bottom line so that's what we're uh, really going off of here but overall um spiders here i still think they have a good shot of getting up into that 20 ma um, they probably will um and then you have that 382 area on the spy and if you follow the spx you know it's 38 30 38 40 somewhere in that area will be kind of your 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 big resistance level here on the daily time frame. As far as the triple Qs are concerned, um, again, you can see the same thing down sloping 20 MA and then those pivots there from the middle of September. Uh, so right around that 285, 286 area is your resistance on the Qs, but the Qs finally uh, made a higher high here today. So got out of that little range there um, before pulling back a little bit. And then over to the Russell 2000, um, that is already into the 20 moving average there. So that may have upside uh, to that purple trend line around the 178 handle. So those would be your levels there um, for those indices right now. Uh, but again, big picture, uh, I should say, big picture in the short term. I still give the market a little bit of an upside bias here, but bigger picture in the medium term, 
Uh, I still think we have another leg down. Doesn't quite start just yet, but we're getting close to it, uh, if you ask me. Anyways, let's get over here and look at some sectors. So uh, semiconductors up 4% on the day. Again, right into that 20 moving average. Well, you guys, that 200 handle would be resistance, and we kind of backed off of it. You know, I wouldn't rule out a move up to 202 even tomorrow, maybe even 204 by some time, by some point. Um, that is a pivot right there. So, you know, right in that range, but 200, 205, there's going to be good resistance, and you can see we're backing off of that red bar high and the 20 moving average currently. But a nice little pop there for semiconductors, Intel, which I do own shares of, uh, up another 2.5%. Uh, NVIDIA here, uh, up another 5. Let's take a look at AMD. AMD up 2, and we had a little over 2.5 there. So nice move. Let's look at Micron, Micron 4 and a quarter. So nice move there for semiconductors. Uh, cloud software also up 3.5%. Again, right back into this white trend line and that was your previous all-time high pre-pandemic highs so that is getting back tested now i wouldn't even rule out again if the market does inch up to that 282 area on the spiders i wouldn't even rule out a move back to this trend line which is actually you know a head and shoulder neckline so that will be a couple of points higher you know right around 272 273 on the igv there's also a little gap fill there right at 271.75 so that could be an area here and then you have that red bar pivot high there so all in that same area there on the igv is going to be pretty good resistance um, especially if we were to get there in the next day or two uh dow transports basically testing that area so i said 12.8 for a while now we've gotten up there it didn't quite touch the 20 moving average it got close enough though we'll call it you know we'll call a spade a spade it's close enough for government work right so right in that area we'll see how it behaves tomorrow you'll have resistance above that at this pivot high which also coincides with that thirteen thousand. You know, we'll call it 13,200. Uh, I believe that goes back. Yeah, that goes back to this pivot high here from 2021. And then we have ultimately above that, if we can get up there, um, 13.5 is your head and shoulder neckline. So those would be your upside targets there in the Dow Transports. But overall, nice move today. Let's not take anything away. Uh, up 3.5% here. But it is about to test that 20 moving average. So we'll see how it behaves tomorrow. Uh, we already talked about rates here, uh, but yeah, 10-year, again, basically flat, holding that 20 moving average right now. I do ex I do think this gets a bid here, um, so we'll see what we get, but overall, no real technical damage on the 10-year, although it is basically flat to lower uh, on the day. Uh, all right, home builders here, so XHB, nice little pop. So again, kind of gap and go, right? So above the 20, I said that, you know, 50, uh, that 58 handle, this white trend line was going to be resistance, but hey, you gap above it, sometimes you just... You know, when you gap above a resistance, it's going to go. So that's what a gap and go day is. And you got above the 20 as well. So next level is, you know, 60 handle right in there. Um, so that's where we're looking for the XHB, also 100 MA right in that same zone. So again, that should be a point of emphasis there. Same thing on the ITB, 100 MA. Um, and then this pivot here right around 50, we'll call it 57, 57 bucks. And then there's a gap all the way up here as well, although that's a little bit far uh, for the current market. Uh, and then VNQ here up, under, well, just under 2% here, was up a little bit over 2% on the day. You know, you basically tested this gap window. Um, not exactly, I mean, you know, most of the work done on, on VNQ was done pre-market, not, not a lot of follow-through here. Unlike the rest of the market, um, I still think it has a little bit more upside in it. I mean, that it's still kind of stretched from that 20 moving average. And then you've got that gap fill. So it'd be interesting if it met that 20 moving average right in that 85.50 area. Um, that would probably be a good resistance point for it in the short term. But VNQ up with everything else. So we'll give it some respect for the time being. Uh, XLF, nice move today, 3.5% gainer. Again, right into the daily 20 MA, back testing the 32 handle, which was weekly support previously. So support becomes resistance. But for right now, it's holding up okay. Um, so we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. You have that. Um, you know, right above that, there's the weekly 20 MA. And then back to the daily, again, just above 32, 32 and a quarter, we'll call it, um, was a previous area that I had marked down. Again, 150 moving average right in that zone as well. So that would be a potential logical target if we were to get above that 20 moving average. Broker dealers, a big winner on the day. Again, strong sector up four and a quarter. Look at that pop there. So right back into that 200 MA. We'll see how that behaves tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, we did make lower lower lows and lower highs, but this is a strong sector, so we got to respect that for the time being. It is into some resistance, though, with that 50 and 200, also kind of like a pivot right here, right before you broke down. So um, wouldn't surprise me to see a little bit of a pause there, but nice move, impressive move for XBD. Shifting over to energy, another big day for crude, up 3%. 
Um, so basically looking to get up to that, I think it's going to get up to that 50 moving average there in the near term. And if we look at a monthly, this is that white trend line there. So that's the one I've been following for a while, that big broadening pattern we have that we broke out of. Then we kind of got, you know, got back into it. We'll see how it behaves there. I do think it pulls back and backs off. Um, by the way, we did sell um, half of our UCO today for over a 9% gain on the first half of that. I'm still holding uh, part of that position here. Just in case we, you know, this is the low, if not, and we, we back off off of this, we still could go down to that 75 handle. I really can't rule that out. Um, in fact, I would like for that to happen because I can get it a lot cheaper. But overall, you know, still liking crude here. Nice little bid there and happy to take some profits there today. Um, nice, pretty easy, stress-free trade so far. Um, but short term, I do think it wants to go up and touch that 50 moving average at the very least here. So we'll see how it behaves off of that. XLE, another big winner on the day, up four and a quarter. It's basically back testing this trend line here, and it's above that. And it's now back. Guys, take a look. XLE is above all four major moving averages on the daily again. So that's not a small feat. Um, and on the weekly as well. So your trend is up on all time frames right now. Um, despite, you know, having those lower highs in play, this is still a very, very strong sector. So energy continuing to hold up. Um, you know, what can you say? Maybe tomorrow it backs off. We get a reversal. It's, it's always a possibility. A lot of the time you break a trend line. The next day it comes back down. Not saying that can't happen, but energy is strong. Definitely have to respect it here. XOP with a power surge here. It was up like 6.5% yesterday. It's up 5, almost 5.5 five today. So again, trend is back up on the XOP. Um, and OIH, a little bit of a laggard here, but you know, reclaiming that 50 and 20, nice little gap there. It's up 3 and uh, three and 3 quarters, so a nice little move there for OIH. But energy remains strong here in the near term. Again, with the exception of Nat Gas, although... Five and a half, it's up five and a half percent, but five and a half percent for Nat Gas is like it's like nothing, right? So, I mean, especially this year. Um, but I will say, we talked about this yesterday. What if we had a you know a fake breakdown? We did come off the lows yesterday and we got a nice little reversal today, so this could be a fake breakdown in Nat Gas. Um, it's been very resilient all year long, so I can't rule it out. We do have that dominant head and shoulders pattern though, um, so that should still get down to 550, but. You know, maybe in the near term, this this pattern fails. Um, but for right now, I don't have a trade on that gas. It's just kind of a little bit neutral on it. Although I do still have a downside bias, I guess, uh, with that head and shoulder top there. All right, dollar index. This is the reason for the rally today. So dollar coming in pretty sharply down, almost 1.5%. Big move for a currency. Right through that 20 moving average. And then we, obviously we talked about that 110.75 area. We're now through that. You had a little pivot here around 110.30. Uh, but ultimately, I think this wants, I'll just draw it in right now for you. Ultimately, I think it wants that 109.50 area. I mean, you got the 50 moving average, upsloping trend line, you know, prior pivot high. That's a logical area there for support. The 50 moving average has held since February, by the way. So um, we'll take a look at it when, if and when we get there. But that looks like that is going to be the next target there on the dollar index. Uh, gold here, nice little, nice little pop here again. So gold, another big winner on the day, up almost 2%. Again, we've had multiple moves of 2% or more on gold in the last week or so. That is not normal for gold. Um, that's a really big deal. And we're right into that daily 50 MA. So again, we could back off here, but this is holding up really well. GDX, GDX as well, up almost 3% on the day, higher high. Take a look at the weekly. So falling wedge breakout, nice little outside, one, two outside candles, higher high. You know, this might want that 20 moving average here in the near term. Now, it is a little extended off the lows. It's not make, you know, it's not, um, not here to deny that, but beautiful falling wedge breakout. So I wouldn't rule out a pullback or something like that, but I do like the move in GDX. And then how about silver? Uh, continuing to follow through here, up 2.5%, getting right back to that white trend line. And that goes back to probably a long ways. I'm not even sure where that one goes back to. Yeah, this one, this one's a, a monthly trend line. Yeah, so that's, okay, that's the pivot eye from 2016 uh, that we're back testing right now. So this should stall out, although I do have this getting up to 2266. Um, and you can make a case, I didn't even point this out yesterday, but you can see I have it kind of drawn on there, but you do have, you, you can make a case that's an inverse right there. So you do that target here about 1740. You know, we'll just draw it up to 2040. You know, add three bucks, 1975, takes you to 2275, and basically that pivot high. So right in that area, 
That's where I think silver wants to go in the medium term. That doesn't mean it won't pull back. That doesn't mean I'm saying buy it and chase it up here right now. Wait for a pullback. I'll be waiting for a pullback. I played this once off the lows this year. Had some nice success with it. I did not expect it to bid up this powerfully this week. Um, but I will be buying this on pullbacks and platinum as well. Again, beautiful WV bat pattern there on platinum. This can also be bought on dips. I've been saying that for quite a while now, and um, nothing has really changed there. But nice power move for platinum, up 4%. And palladium finally doing something, giving us something to talk about here. Um, getting above this pivot high, so possible move for palladium. Again, it's got to confirm it tomorrow. doesn't mean we can't trade down and, and reject it. Uh, but a nice little pop there for palladium and copper. Also having a nice little bit here. It did come in off the highs right around 3 p.m. So it's right around the Colmex close. It came on pretty sharply off the highs there. And it's basically just trading flattish to sideways into the uh, the after hours. But nice little pattern here, a little channel. We'll see if it can push through that tomorrow um, or if it maybe pulls back, puts in a higher low, and then maybe it can push through that afterward. But a nice little move here pretty much across the board for metals. Uh, and then lastly, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin trying to peak above this trend line. Again, this trend line goes back to really the, the, the all-time high. It does go back to the all-time high. So it could be a little bit you know, inaccurate as far as like where it's drawn, but it's pretty close, right? And basically, we'll just put it this way. You're testing that 50 moving average. If you get above that 50 moving average, that probably clears it up to about 23,000. So nice little move here for Bitcoin, um, Ether Green as well. Again, we're watching this white trend line here. So that's the head and shoulder neckline. If you get above that, um, that would be a failed pattern that would get me interested in ether here. Um, but for right now, let's not, you know, get too premature here, but a nice little pop there for Bitcoin and ether starting to uh, peak above that trend line there. So we'll be watching that uh, very closely tomorrow. All right. So market's closing in about two minutes here. So spiders, let's take a look. Yeah, getting a nice bid, closing basically at the highs of the day. Nice move for the market. Again, short term, I still give the market the upside bias, but bigger term, the bigger picture there are still problems out there and um you know again this is just a bear market rally if you ask me anyways guys gonna wrap it up here you guys take care come find me on carnivaltrades.com i'll talk to you all tomorrow